And we listened to how, Mike, you would get on the phone and vet the investor with that buyer. Yeah, let's do it. Because I think that's where, I think once we get to that point, then everybody starts calling Mike. How do I handle this? What do I say to the investors? We could do it, Christian. Do you have do you have ten minutes? Yeah, I'll be the investor. Okay, whatever you want. You want to be the you want to be the broker. You want to be Christian, or you want to be the investor. Let me be the investor. You be the broker. Okay. And then let's say Melissa, you want to hop in here real quick. You can be the be the first guy that we talk to, Mike, bringing me, the investor to the table. Okay. Who's the investor? What's his investor's name? So I'm Michael, right? Yeah. So Christian, I would like to introduce you to Donnie. He's gonna be. Um, supplying funds or being part of the investment of the car wash. Hey, uh, what's up, Don? How are you? I'm well. How are you? Good, good. Yeah, I was just talking to Mike. He mentioned that you guys are looking to, um, you know, try to raise some money and, and put together a deal for for this car wash. Yes, sir. That's the plan, brother. Nice, nice. Okay. So tell me a little bit about you guys. Like, you know, do you, are you guys? You know, Mike mentioned that you guys were on Wall Street. Do you, do you guys own any any businesses currently? My dad hasn't had a car since 2003. Okay. He is the richest man. <laughs> he is the richest man, and he's given me a lot of money, and I'm investing the money with Michael. Understood. So, so you and Michael are looking to um, work with your dad to try to put this deal together. Correct. And okay. if Michael says it's good, it's good. Gotcha. gotcha. But Michael knows what's best. Do you think it'll be helpful? Maybe we got your dad on the line just so we can, um, you know, answer any no, questions. No, my dad gave me the money. I already have the money. You don't have to get my dad on the line. Okay. How do you guys want to proceed? So I have a forensic accountant that I want to bring in. And I want him to sit at the car wash and I want him to count the cars. And I want him to meet with their accountant. I want him to go over all the federal five years of financials with them. And once that's done, I want to come up with, I want to formulate an offer based on what the actual business makes on paper. And Michael's going to confirm that. And then once we make that offer, we'll go into a due diligence period of 60 to 90 days. And then after that, we'll close it another 120 days. How's that sound? Sure. So the car wash is not going to, you know, fully show everything on paper. You know, if, if you're looking for something that shows all the revenue and, and the profit exactly at 750, this this wash is not going to work. To be, you know, just don't want to waste your yeah, time. Yeah, but there's ad backs, correct? Yeah, there's a, there's ad backs, but there's also, you know, a little bit of cash on top. You know, the you're car telling me doesn't report all the cash. Yeah, so not everything is on is on the returns, and, and you know, as, as black and white as like a franchise. No, I understand it's a small business, um, but we have there has to be a way to prove the seven fifty. No, absolutely, and and that shouldn't be a problem. And and look, he's willing to hold the note, you know, for with at least half down. So, you know, he wouldn't give you fifty percent of his business if he didn't believe that you could pay him back. So the the, the verification shouldn't be a problem. So so how about this? Why don't you know? I, I had asked Mike earlier, but he said that you know he has investors and stuff. So. If you guys can just shoot me over a proof of funds, um, email it to me whenever you can, and then um, I'll, you know, I'll touch base with the owner. We can maybe set up a first initial call. Maybe you, your dad, and Mike, and and you know, really. My dad doesn't get on calls. I'm sorry. My dad doesn't get on calls. I said I have the money. Got it. Got it. So so you you pretty much make all the decisions. You don't need your dad. I'm the decision maker. No, no more daddy. Gotcha. Okay. Congrats. Oh, okay. So yeah. So just shoot me a proof of funds whenever you can, and you know we'll we'll set up a call with with everyone, and and then I'm we'll send go. you the name of my restaurant as discussed. That's fine, right? Does that pass the owner's test? Candidly, Don, the owner really just wants to make sure that everyone has the money before he gets on a call. You know, he owns a couple of well, other. You want to see thirty-five million or a hundred million? I mean, whatever makes you know whatever you can to to make to just show at least that you could put. All right, we'll get it over to you, Michael. Send it over. All right. Anything else? That that's that's all I need, my uh, Don. And um, you know, right. we're looking at other car washes as well. Uh, we'll let you know. Thanks. Bye. I mean, look, that that was a, a little uncomfortable, but if he sends a proof of funds, then I did my job. You know, he's 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 says he's a decision maker. But with his name on it, it has to have his name on it. Yeah, I'll review. I'll get the. That's proof very of, important. Hundred percent. And and look, uh, if once he sends his proof of funds, then maybe it says a different name. I'll call him about it. I'll call him out on it. And, and I'm and I'm not afraid to get uncomfortable. You know, and I'm not afraid to get awkward. And, and you can't. As a broker, you got to be willing to do that. And this goes with, you know, getting more reps in and talking to people and, and, and getting more confident. But do not, do not, do not be afraid to get awkward. Um, this guy was a little bit of a douche and, and I'll probably get control back on another call, but I just wanted to just get the proof of funds. You know, I, I don't have the time for, oh, I'm the daddy. You know, he, my dad has the money. I got all the money from my dad and here that's- Dad hasn't had a carb since 2003, he said. So yeah. I mean, <laughs> We, we, we pull up the proof of funds and, you know, we move forward from there. And I'll do another vetting out session after I get the proof of funds before I set up the call. Because one of the things too, like as a broker, you really want to make sure you vet these guys out because 
if you don't and you bring this person to the seller, you just look bad. You look very bad and the seller just doesn't take you serious. And then when you have, I mean, when you do have a serious guy, you try to bring it to the seller, the seller's just like, you know, it's kind of like the boy, the, the, the boy who cried wolf, you know? So this is why it's very important that you just make sure the guy's qualified, make sure he's a decision maker, make sure you're not wasting time. This way, like I said, you just do deals successfully. So either way, you always want to get the proof of proof of funds. Yeah, before we uh, even before we involve the owner, I get the proof of funds. Before, you know, with the LOI, I get a proof of funds. Before sharing tax returns or any financials, I get a proof of funds. So there's there's like don't waste your time doing all this work and you haven't gotten the proof of funds, right? So as a broker, you're not gonna waste your time, you're not gonna waste the seller's time until you've gotten certain things in place to ensure that it's worth your time. Absolutely. And and also it just avoids the heartache. You know, a lot of brokers, they a lot a lot of the newer guys, they they get they're heartbroken because a deal falls apart, but that guy wasn't gonna buy from to begin with. You just weren't able to really understand that from the beginning, which is not your fault. You know, you guys are, you know, maybe some people are newer or maybe you're just you, you know, maybe you're a senior broker that you're just used to, you're not used to having uncomfortable conversations and vetting out buyers. You just want to present, send the, a million listings to the guy, but you just avoid the heartache. You avoid the waste of time. You know, you, you do the deal successfully and you don't, and you save time driving around too. A lot of got more vets driving around and with, with people that are not qualified to begin with. And, and this all can be done on a, a couple of phone calls. If you, if you have the right tonality, you know, you, you ask the right questions and, um, you stay neutral and they trust you. Nice. And I think a lot of people get intimidated when they think they're going to be talking to investors, like they're going to know something that we don't know. Right. So, um, yeah, 100%. a lot of people get tell that we're new or that we're just starting out. So they may ask questions. How would you handle getting asked questions from investors? How, if they switch it on to you, how would you handle answering questions that you may not know the answer to right then and there to get through that call? I would just say, hey, look, that's that's a great question. Let me just confirm with the owner and I'll, I'll get back to you. That's all I would say. There's something I, I, that yeah. I don't know exactly. And, and look, another thing too, guys, is like you can't be afraid to, you're going to mess up. You know, there's no, you're going to mess up. You got to be okay failing. And, and that's the... That's the number one thing that, you know, Mike and, and myself and, and some of these other business, you know, the senior brokers have is like, we're not afraid to, to fail on a call. We've had a lot of failed, failed calls, but you know, if you don't get uncomfortable and, and you don't get, and you don't fail, it's hard to learn. It's hard to move forward.